So if you've been keeping up with the whole Brandon Smith situation, and if you haven't, basically the long and short of the whole situation is that Brandon Smith has been verbally abusive to his girlfriend, just overall a bit of a cunt, and then recently did this apology post, apologizing for the way he's acting, and all of his friends in the comment section were all supportive and, you know, defending him despite the fact that there's a line and Brandon Smith crossed it and went the extra fucking mile to do even more shitty fucking things. Yet his friends seem to want to defend the indefensible and enable Brandon Smith. And as we'll see in this video, Brandon Smith is back at it again, doing the same old shit, defending and minimalizing indecent exposure. Relatively shocking announcement. I was in an argument with my girlfriend and she tried to compare uh, rape and streaking at a house party when you're too drunk and don't know what you're doing. And I think that's an actual um, insult and a slap in the face to rape survivors. And turning to your rape survivor girlfriend and calling her a cum guzzling whore isn't disrespectful to rape survivors in any sort of way. And it's not like you have a track record with disrespecting rape survivors something you've done on numerous occasions without any sign of remorse for your actions, but her saying that rape and indecent exposure are both categorized as sexual assault, which they both fucking are, is comparing it to rape when it really isn't. What she's doing is saying that they're in the same category. Them being in the same category doesn't have any bearing on whether or not they're the same, whether or not they're just as bad or you know, one's worse or one's not. You know, you're just a fucking dumbass. You're trying to start arguments for the sake of it. And if you don't think so, you can block me. Well, I do that, but you already fucking have blocked me, Brandon. Let's go to the second fucking video you did. Hey guys, uh, Brandon here, and as per my last video, I know I said I wouldn't do that again. I know I said I wouldn't, uh, publicly outburst against my girlfriend again, but... But, I'm gonna do it again, and I'm gonna keep doing it, so long as I have my fucking stupid friends to enable me, and let me off the hook every single time I do it, and act as if I'm a good person, despite the fact, you know, if you're friends with someone, and you're really a good friend, you should really set boundaries and lines that, if you cross a certain line, you know, there's consequences for that, and there's social repercussions for that. Mm. Simple things like telling someone who's dying of cancer that they should die from it, I would say falls under that, but, you know, just me. The thing is, she let two people call me a rape apologist and a rapist. Well, no one as far as I know has called you a rapist, and, you know, there's no evidence to suggest that you are a rapist, and... You know, no one's used that against you, so I don't know where that's coming from, but people calling you a rape apologist because you fucking minimalize sexual assault, you fucking idiot. What do you expect? Oh, isn't that great? Isn't that fun? That's what, the third time she's let people call me something horrendous that she knows that I'm not? Well, I mean, a lot of the stuff you've been accused seems to fucking check out. You, people called you an abuser to your girlfriend. You were abusing your girlfriend. That checks out. LeBon called you a pedophile for saying 15 is my limit when you were like 19. Yeah, checks out. That's kind of chomo behavior there. So, you know, what is the that's been made up about you? This alleged fact that someone called you a rapist? Who called you a rapist? I don't know anyone that did that. That's the third time? Oh. Yeah, um... I think that's fair game for me to do that. I still do, and I always will, because I don't think that calling me a fucking rapist or allowing people to call the person that you claim to love. Oh, so we're gonna go the route of, oh, well, if you loved me, you would treat me better, just like your friend Jay did message and say, oh, well, you know, Ellie, this is your boyfriend. How can you let people uh, treat him this way? When Brandon has said way fucking worse to Ellie, which would make him way worse than Ellie just by all of the shit that he's pulled in the situation. And then when Horror Kid messages Jade about the situation being like, hey, this is the fucked up things that he's done. She replies, lol lit. 
because that's the type of friends that Brandon likes to keep up that find that type of shit acceptable because how else is he gonna get away with it other than having friends that fucking support and condone everything he does? A rapist after she knows how that affected your life before after you told her how you got accused of rape and how it ruined your life. <laughs> I think that's uh, kind of fair for me to do at that point. The pedophile thing? Okay. Whatever. I'll forgive. Because it's true. But, um, rapist? After you know how it ruined my life? Middle fingers. Block me if you're not going to do anything about it. Because if you're not going to do anything about it, I don't want you in my life. Well, you know, if you don't want her in your life and, you know, you telling her... Hey, why don't you block me? Why don't you just do it yourself, man? You know, if you don't like her and you have such a problem, because this is a thing I've noticed in this whole drama is you'd always message her and spam message her and spam call her and always want her attention. And then as soon as Holly gets in a call, she turns to Ellie being like, Fucking leave Brandon alone. Stop messaging him. Ba 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 ba. And you're like, I agree. I want nothing to do with you. If that's the case, how comes you've never blocked her? How comes it's always you that's sending the large paragraphs and Ellie sending like one word responses? You know, who's the one that really seems to care the most in the situation? Gotta say, it looks like you. And you can go live the rest of your miserable fucking life. Just like James Devonport <laughs> said. That's and you me. didn't do anything about it. And James Devonport also commented on your fucking status saying that I'm a dummy, and he also posted on my- <laughs> Oh, the humanity. My wall saying that you never loved me, and he also, you know, tried to fuck with me that way, and you still <laughs> let him. You still- I told you who he was. And I told you what who, he did, me? and you still have him on your friends list. Well, just to say, just to absolve any guilt on Ellie's part, uh, you know, you let that happen. No, she didn't. You know, she's not the only person that thought you were behaving like a piece of shit in that situation. Everyone did in the call. Everyone was calling you out on your shit, Brandon. Like, you can listen to the call again, and you can see that. That it wasn't just her who had the problem. I was one of those people. And I decided once she blocked me, on my main account actually, I hopped to James Davenport and then started leaving nasty stuff because... I figure if you're such a nasty fucking person, you deserve some nasty shit held your way. Seems fair. You know, you seem so affected by it, and then had to immediately message Ellie after the fact, being like, Oh, so now you're getting people to attack me now? As if, you know, like, she's not the only one who thinks you fucked up. Like, you really think she has to go and, like, ask people and initiate that? Like, no. You bothered more than just her, bro. So... If you honestly believe I'm a rapist, because I say that streaking and rape, comparing the two, is um, an insult and a slap in the face to rape survivors. Brandon Smith here, the person who has literally got people to send rape victims rape porn, is now going to get on this fucking pedestal about how... Ellie is actually the one who doesn't care about rape survivors, and also the one who outed uh, a rape victim. Yeah, that was you, Brandon, who did that. So the fact you're even gonna get on this huge fucking pedestal is just amusing. My mom was raped. I saw what it did to her, okay? And I also saw many people streaking at parties. I saw many a people... I saw many a dick that I didn't want to see. I saw many a tits that I didn't want to see. But you know what? I walked out of the room. Problem solved. No therapy. Well, considering people react to situations differently, you know, and that no one said that indecent exposure was exactly the same as rape, I don't know why you're still going through that whole argument. You can acknowledge that both things are bad, while also not saying that the two things are the same or just as bad or... You know, even comparing the two in any sort of way, it's just saying, yeah, both are bad, you know? And both are bad. 
you know, there's nothing incorrect with that statement. And also, you mentioning how your mom got raped and how it was an awful experience. And, you know, maybe you should use that compassion more. You know, that like, hey, something bad happened to someone. Maybe I should have empathy and not say things. You know, like, given the situation your dad's going through right now, and you still have the nerve to say to someone like Ellie, who's also in kind of a similar situation, you know, I hope you fucking die, and you're also on a life insurance, like, really, man? That takes a cold level of lacking empathy that I've never seen before. That's fucked, man. Nothing. Well, you see... Rape survivors actually have to go to therapy. Because, you know, every single situation that is shitty always requires therapy. You know, indecent exposure cannot be a bad situation because you did not have to go to therapy. Someone pushing you over and, you know, giving you bruises is not bad because you didn't have to go to therapy for it. That was a good thing. To get over what? fucking happen to them. So if you're honestly going to compare a guy streaking... Again, streaking I'm not minimalizing it, guys, but check this out. That holds you down and threatens you and forces himself upon you. And if you're going to let somebody call me a rapist, Ellie, you can block me and enjoy the rest of your life. Because I know I will. I'm moving to Ohio. <laughs> cool, Get a job man. That, I'm, that I pretty much already got lined up. <laughs> got an apartment that I got lined up. I got a whole new life ahead of me. <laughs> yeah, the life of greasy hair, novelty sized glasses, and wearing our shirts inside out. You better be so jealous. What do you have? Showers, hygiene. You know, the ability to wash hair, you know, within the time span of, you know, maybe every other day or so. Like, you know, normal, basic human hygiene. You ain't got shit. Yeah, she ain't got shit because she's always pooping it out. You ain't. You constipated. Maybe if you took a shit once in a while, you wouldn't be so cranky, dude. <laughs>